This is where India's most powerful telescope for hunting planets outside the solar system is located. The telescope hosts Asia's most powerful spectrograph as well that is helping getting the job done. It is located at Mount Abu Observatory and is operated and run by the Physical Research Laboratory or PRL which is the research institute under the Department of Space. The campus here at the summit of the Guru Shikhar Peak in Rajasthan is dotted with white domes, five of them varying in size going left to right. All of them the same shade of pure reflective white jutting out from the rocks. Tourists throng this region for the various temples here. Locally, these domes that are inaccessible to them are explained away as where the government gathers to study aliens. The reality, in fact, is not far off. The domes house telescopes of various sizes which come alive at night to scan very tiny patches of the sky at a stretch. The biggest two of the five are looking for something very specific. Planets that orbit stars outside the solar system. And the 2.5 meter telescope, the newest of the lot, is looking for planets that are similar to Earth. This telescope is equipped with a state-of-the-art indigenously built spectrograph called Paris 2. Paris 2 is the most precise and highest resolution stabilized spectrograph in Asia and the team has just discovered the first planet, a sub-Saturn, through this telescope with their peer-reviewed findings to be published soon. This giant instrument, the 2.5 meter telescope, along with the other four, is built drilled into a single monolithic rock formation made of granite. Behind the scenes at location are a mere handful of very young scientists performing path-breaking astronomy in the country, often accompanied by bears and leopards on campus under the night sky before the entire facility now shuts down for the monsoon season. Using the 1.2 meter telescope itself, uh, our scientists have discovered the first exoplanet from India. And currently, three of them have been already discovered. And more recently, using the 2.5 meter telescope and the Paras 2, which is uh, the elder brother of Paras 1, we have already seen a new, of, uh, uh, new exoplanet, which uh, is going to be announced soon after the peer review process is over. Until the early 90s, astronomers were not really sure how many planets existed outside the solar system, that is, compared to the number of stars. Telescopes like the Hubble revealed to previously skeptical cohorts the sheer number of galaxies in any patch of the sky, and every galaxy contains hundreds and hundreds of stars. Now we know most with their own planetary systems. This was confirmed after the launch of multiple space telescopes and ground-based observatories to study stars outside the solar system. As soon as we started detecting planets, we began to look for some similar to Earth, or at least one that can harbor life. With Paris 1 and the 1.2 meter telescope, the team discovered three giant planets that are comparable to Jupiter and Saturn in Mars, along with subsequent other discoveries. This was the telescope that made India's first exoplanet discovery in 2018. The new, more powerful 2.5 meter telescope has been operational for a year and has discovered one planet comparable to Saturn's mass so far. The planets are observed after stars are studied through the radial velocity method, which watches for the gravitational effect between a star and its orbiting planet. We know that the planet goes around the star, host star, but actually it is going around the common center of mass. Right. But since because the planet uh, mass is so small compared to the, the star, so the common center of mass almost coincide with the center of the star. So Even therefore so what happens is that while the planet goes around the common center of mass, the, what the star does, it wobbles. So. So we have to catch that wobbling. The Paris 1 spectrograph that's attached to the 30-year-old 1.2 meter telescope was Chakrabarti's brainchild and was funded in 2008. 
it was the first of its kind in India. After observations began in late 2013, the telescope became the first ever to discover an exoplanet in the country and was already one of the top six precise spectrographic instruments in the world. The promising results led to the Department of Space funding the newer 2.5-meter telescope in 2018 along with PARIS-2, which stands for PRL, Advanced Radial Velocity Abu Sky Search. Currently, uh, PARIS-2 is like one of the five instruments globally mm. that can do this kind of measurements and it is the highest resolution stabilized, spectro stabilized spectrograph in Asia. A spectrograph breaks down light from a star into its spectrum, much like the prism. Zoomed in though, the different wavelengths provide a lot of information about the star that emits the light and the environment that surrounds it. Star targets are not decided by these telescopes, but by previous missions that have listed candidate exoplanets that need confirmation. When a different team comes along and confirms the presence of the planet, they are credited with the discovery. The computer here shows data from a faraway star, comparing zoomed in versions of individual spectrum lines to point out different wavelengths of light obtained from the star and how these are calibrated with respect to control signals. In stars, you have different kinds of metals, elements. So what happens is when the starlight is passing from the core of your star to towards outside, there is absorption happening because of these metals. Mm -hmm. And these absorption features will be characteristic depending on what your element is. Looking for tiny planets invisible to optical astronomy requires sophisticated equipment that observes in wavelengths beyond those visible to the human eye. These instruments study various electromagnetic emission types from distant sources, bringing in data from a tiny sliver of the sky through giant mirrors housed inside these buildings. The smallest of the telescopes sits on a wild lawn and is a 43 cm telescope. A crawl-in axis provides space inside for three to four adults when the dome is opened. The facility is located within Mount Abu Wildlife Reserve and nearly everyone has regular sightings of the Indian bear digging through trash left behind by tourists at twilight. There are leopards around and as students, faculty and engineers go about their jobs, several among the 150 or so species of chirping high altitude birds that can fit in the palm of one's hand flitter about. The two large telescopes are housed inside their own buildings. The new one is shielded more by a rounded block of a shell than a dome. The blue-coloured, older 1.2-metre telescope was built by Sri Hari Kota, while the 2.5-metre telescope was built jointly by PRL and the Belgian company Amos. It was put together and came to fruition during the first year of the COVID pandemic when the world was under lockdown. Paris 2 continues to be the only telescope and spectrograph put together within the country domestically. The telescope might have begun its run last year, but the building is yet to be officially inaugurated. The ceremony later this year will see high-profile visits from those in the Indian government, academia and the Department of Space. The telescope is mounted on a huge platform that looks like the inside of a closed movie set. The inside lights up with natural light only when the outer structure is opened. During the day, this usually occurs when maintenance work is being done. The shell itself also rotates, starting about 10 feet off the ground. It moves upon an inverted railway track with wheels fixed to the ground as the entire outer hull of the building moves over it in a circle. The telescope sits right in the middle and looks almost like the inner skeleton of a typical telescope a person would imagine. And that's also because it is. The gigantic structure consists of a pier that rotates a turntable and spans a depth of about two more floors below it. The mirrors sit at the top of the instrument and collect light. They are supported by actuators, which are piston-like structures at the bottom that produce thrust to keep the mirror from coming in contact with this physical structure of the telescope. The entire thing can rotate 360 degrees and can tilt and pivot, enabling the team to point it to any point in the sky. Paris 2's connection looks like a black box attached to the telescope, although it is physically fed by fiber optic cables 
from the telescope mirror to a vacuum chamber below that houses the actual extremely sensitive and large spectrograph for stability. Apart from looking for exoplanets, scientific objectives for the telescope also includes studying transient high energy phenomena like supernovae and black holes and the center of galaxies. The telescope requires cooling during infrared observations and this is done using liquid nitrogen. The gas is made in-house in two plants right outside. There are two aluminizing plants as well where specialized equipment is used to maintain the coating and the shine of telescope mirrors. Outside both telescopes is a catwalk, a walkway around the dome to allow complete visual reference to those inside if needed. During the day, it provides a clear view of the weather and small towns around Sirohi and at night, these turn into dots of lights and bowls of lightning. The research work being done here at Mount Abu is carried out by a small team of almost entirely young scientists and engineers. Those stationed here stay in the town about 40 minutes away, which is their daily commute. Students and engineers are deeply involved in day-to-day -day activities. The use of telescopes and observatories by various teams from different locations requires proposals that need to be approved before time can be scheduled on the telescope for observation. The team here is working to make this entire process automated. Robotic means anybody across the world over internet can submit requests ah. anytime. Ah. And those requests will be automatically scheduled ah. whenever it is possible, ah. optimally. And then telescope will start observing itself without hmm. any human intervention hmm. and then send the data to the uh, user. The ongoing work doesn't stop there. Despite the high degree of precision of the Paris 2 instrument, teams at location are working on improving the sensitivity even more to get closer to Earth mass readings. Going forward, the experts at PRL are determined to lay a very strong foundation for cutting-edge work done at internationally competitive levels when it comes to exoplanetary astronomy in India. We also use the 1.2 meter telescope for doing solar system studies like we observe comets, we have observed moon, we have excellent quality of data talking about various features on the moon are quite bright which you call as swirls and we have seen that uh, by using the polarimetric measurements of uh, the area of a moon which is quite bright we can understand a lot of features and a lot of processes which has happened in the past over the moon using our own 1.2 meter telescope and uh, we have also studied comets uh, many of them have been studied in the past over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. We have observed uh, novas and supernovas. We have observed various blazars, m drops and things like that. So, in the future when you look at uh, the capabilities which is existing with our 2.5 meter telescope, all what we have done is going to be enhanced by a factor of 10 which in turn means that we can look at very faint objects. Soon enough, Mount Abu's observatory and its powerful 2.5 meter telescope with the Paris 2 spectrograph will make news for discovering India's first ever exoplanet similar in mass to Earth.